an issue, just holding them in awareness. As it's sort of a contemplative exercise in a way, holding them in awareness without judgment. And again, this goes back to sort of the, 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 that state where the, the music improviser doesn't really judge sort of, sort of the flow of normative, you might say, and radical ideas. It, he, he or she just sort of engages in that flow and embraces that. It looks like we are, okay, so just really quickly, um, another issue that's come up is, um, and, and just recently too, is there a field of aspect of, of consciousness in improvised music? Um, and improvisers are always talking about kind of emerging of um, individuals. Um, I had this whole thing on um, going sort of inside this meditation practice, but to close, uh, one of my favorite instances of, of imp great improvising in science has to do with, um, this um, episode that, uh, uh, regarding the Bigfoot, and this is a valid photograph, by the way. <laughs> and um, some, there, it was being, there were some footprints that were discovered in the mountains in the Pacific Northwest, and an anthropologist was called in to look at the footprints. Uh, Grover Krantz, I think is his name. And um, so he examines the footprints, you know, and, the, and they go through the mountains for uh, five miles, this incredibly rugged terrain. And, and he concludes that, you know, he came in obviously to, to debunk the whole thing. And he said, either the Sasquatch is real and that is ridiculous, <laughs> or a brilliant anatomist designed the fakes which have been placed by a secret organization like the SSE. <laughs> and I regard that as impossible. So therefore, the ridiculous alternative would appear to be true. And to me, that's great improvising. Thank you. <laughs> A really great question. Yeah, the question is, are there other musical genres in which improvisation is important? And the fact is, that actually, um, if you look at most of the music, the vast majority of music in the world, improvisation in one kind, in one form or another, it's different in blue. You mentioned bluegrass. There's definitely an improvisational component. South Indian music has um, an improvisational component, but not nothing near North Indian music. Um, but if you look at the vast majority of music in the world, improvisation is, is a central process. And re really, the um, you know, er European and classical music as it's practiced now um, is, is, is sort of anomalous in that way. So it's a, it's a very interesting turn of uh, sort of from in the back. center. Well, I'm in a jazz band where only we do is improvisation. Uh, and many of you have heard us before. Uh, we also get to the point where we get episodes of being good, as opposed to being just ordinary. And sometimes we even get into what you call the zone. And we ask ourselves, what is it we have to do to get to that zone? We come up with a number of uh, prerequisites, okay? and a couple of them stand out. One of them is that we all have to be able to hear and listen to each other and be listening. Another one is that we can't have any freedom of honest. We should be trying to make the band sound good. That doesn't mean that you can't take solos. It just means you have to be behind the solo, not trying to get out in front of it. And when we have those kinds of situations, uh, we'll get to a number we look at each other just like we rehearsed it. Of course, it's never been rehearsed. It's just that everything goes on, and the most important thing is if we can record one of those zones at the time we're doing it, that would be great. It requires play it again, Ed. Maybe during the break. I just had a thought when you talk about the same time and the same time, and the same time. you can have a good guy in position. And it's got a roof, it's like the whole thing on the display in front of me. And that's what's going to happen when it's doing a normal jazz player that wants to make money a series. And it's going to be a great risk. Yeah, you know, a whole lot of money. Yeah, you know, it's like a whole, many 
issues in there. You know, um, if you look at the literature on sort of peak experiences from composers, and then you look at the um, sort of literature, I'm glad that this person is a musician, got us into this, uh, literature on peak experience of improvisers, you see a really interesting difference that came out here, and that is that the composers are talking about sort of the um, emergence of sometimes complete pieces when you, you know, when you like read about Brahms and Mozart's letters, um, they're talking about, they're talking about the, like the complete compositions coming in, a, you know, in an instant, whereas improvisers are, are not. Improvisers are talking about heightened interactions between the players they're playing, so they're, talking, they're playing with, and this, and this sort of thing, as the, like the zone and, and all that. And so these are, these are two different musical worldviews. Um, I mean, there's a whole thing, but I, and luckily the bell went, so um, <laughs> it's a beautiful point. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm.